the challenge that he will then see it shuffle. If you manage to run GKE, uh, the idea of the production on GKE, we committed very heavily to this challenge, and we have two persons, uh, two people that will be presenting that. One is Jason, and the second is Paolo. So give them a big applause. <laughs> So, I'm going to go ahead and kick right into the demo. You actually will be surprised how quickly we can get everything done. <laughs> now, the only thing I have to do is tell you that you would go ahead and create yourself a free account. Go ahead and create yourself a free account on the Google Cloud platform. We have prepared only one step which is setting up a static IP address for the node because you need to set up a DNS address that will actually work. Other than that, we have done no other configuration as of this time. I'm going to do a few steps. I'm going to create a cluster, and from that cluster I will then connect to get my authorization token, and then I will deploy everything. This process should take less than 10 minutes in total, from nothing to an entire working installation with all features. Can't use spaces. Yeah. <laughs> we do have the one recommendation of at least two BCUs. We expect it will take two to three minutes, and in the meantime, I will show you some of the things that we've done. So the first thing we've done is we've actually based this on the original I2P that we just did in the past based on the core shift. It's also based on Kubernetes, as is Google Cloud. The advantage is that it's an entirely public cloud that you can get access to for free, as opposed to Origin, where your two options are run your own cluster, which has the entire system overhead required for that, the engineering, the maintenance, etc. You can come to Google Cloud, get a free account, 60 days, try out the CE or EE version, entirely in the cloud without costing you a dime with infrastructure that you can count on. And set it up with our help in approximately 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we actually have is the Kubernetes GitLab demo, and in this we actually have all of our configuration that's required to set this up. This is actually a lot more complex than it looks, because we've actually had to create 24 separate YAML files for all of the individual components that are being done. Your database, your Redis, your Mattermost, everything else that goes with that, as well as setting up completely automated, let's encrypt access. So not only will your node set itself up, you will have full secure communications on everything you do, including all of your review apps. Mm. <laughs> so one of the things I'm going to do ahead of time is we know where we're going, and I can save a tiny bit of time by just exporting two things. Our actual address and domain that we're going to use. And in case you can't see that, by the way, yes, that is makesitdance.com. <laughs> Behind that, all I have to do is do boss generate. And now I have a configuration file that I can use to pass directly to Kubernetes, and it will load everything I need right to work with makesiddance.com. All the OpenSSL configured with Let's Encrypt out of the box with two settings and a single bash script. Now, we are not doing this with WebUI because apparently we found out there's a bug where they don't actually validate properly. So I do apologize that we can't do this in all pretty pictures. Mm -hmm. 
and we just wait for the cluster to get done. So, while we wait for this, this process took us pretty much until yesterday, about lunchtime. Sid caught me and Camille out in the corner here and asked, what are we working on? Why aren't we getting ready to go? And we said, well, you need to dance. <laughs> it has taken, uh, say, most of our time for the last several days. And no matter who you ask to work on the project, whether they think that they put in a little bit of work or a lot of work, we've all had to come through a lot of documentation and a lot of features to make sure that everything worked perfectly for the ICP. So if you were involved in any way, we appreciate the help. Okay, so from here, I'm actually going to go use Web Console. So I shall grab really quickly. Over to the console endpoint for our cluster that we just spun up. Now, they don't have Let's Encrypt set up. <clears throat> now, when we log into our Kubernetes cluster, we can actually see that there is absolutely nothing configured with the base system whatsoever. No services, no volumes, nothing other than default tokens. So I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to just copy one thing out from the Google console so that we can run Kubernetes directly against their cloud. And now we have all this in place. So I will do one simple command. And this will load up all the objects that we've taken, bundled in one, and shipped off. So everything is up and is now in progress. Now this process again can take two to three minutes because it's now spinning up all of these individual nodes, including going out and making active calls for all of the lesson from certificates so that we have everything across the board. And let me tell you, that was a pain in the butt because apparently lesson code doesn't like it when you try over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, so apparently, they don't like spamming. Who thought? <laughs> <laughs> so we have configured everything here. While Google Cloud does support its own load balancer through the Kubernetes engine, we have chosen to actually implement an individual Nginx control for that so that we can do multiple subdomains as well as handling review apps and multiple environments such as staging and production. So we have to wait for that one to spin up, but it takes just a little bit of time. That annoying little error happens a couple times a day. Uh, basically what it's telling us is it's trying to actually set up the secure storage, and it's going a little slower than Google likes. So that's all good. You can see that we're already up and running, but it's finishing the configuration of everything. So while the node for GitLab is not completely online yet, we do actually know that it's there and functional because we've got 503 services. Yeah, errors. Okay, we've got all greens. Who knows, it could be one of these DNS problems not all week. No, I'm sorry, it's uh, right now configuring all in this package. Uh, oh no, I'm, I'm aware. <laughs> we didn't yet figure out a way to postpone the, uh, making the deployment to be green uh, before actually the deployment was finished. That is however on our test for the next week, by the way. <laughs>
I guess. Let us change our laptops and we'll be going on. Let us change the laptops and we'll be going this way. Um, so, um, I will be uh, showing you the whole idea to production workflow using the GitLab that Jason has just provisioned. So, let's go to. Um, thank you. So, yeah, that's really useful. <laughs> this is how I contribute. Everyone can contribute. <laughs> I'm going to the web page, setting a new password. It's secret, I will tell you. Look safe. No, it's not secret. It's password. Okay, let me show you again. As you can see here, I was here before. Okay, so now I will set up a new project, import a, um, an application I want to uh, deploy, and uh, show you all the whole thing. So, um, I will create a new project and import. Um, let's see. So let's go to my GitLab um, and take this simple application and import it to the instance we just created. Okay. Simple application. So many things to click. Public. Create. So. Uh, this is the simplest application. Actually, Neve can uh, help us uh, reduce its size even more. So first, we had a Sinatra application that weighed that the Docker image weighed around 70 megabytes. So uh, thanks to Nick's, Nick's contribution, we uh, reduced it to 50 megabytes. But it still takes 50 megabytes to deploy Ruby, Ruby application. So as you can see, it's just a simple hello world. We'll work with that. Let's see what we can do. Okay. So first. We need to set up a Kubernetes integration that will be used to uh, provide all the things. Um, Kubernetes. So I go to the service Kubernetes, mark this as active. I need an application where all they remember the dashboard JSON created, so I'll take the URL from there. Here, I'll copy paste it now. Um, there's a secrets. I need an application token and a certificate for the SSL validations, which is required because we are using oh, X. Um, okay, secret token. Let's save the changes. Now I am able to test the settings and everything's work okay. It works okay, so yeah, we're good to go. So uh, I set up the Kubernetes integration. Now I have to set up the, the how to deploy. I can use uh, one of the templates that was prepared before. So uh, the Kubernetes template. What I need to change here is only one thing. It's a domain name. So we set it up so I can reuse the makes it dance. Um, this is yeah. Uh, this is the script that actually does the deployment. Um, I think uh, Camille can, can go into more details about it. Um, okay. This is the deployment that's uh, all the things that are required to set it up. So this will pre prepare a CI configuration that I will be merging directly to master, which will start deploying the application uh, already to the staging environment. So let's go to pipelines. As you can see, the application here is building. Um, the, once, it will be, once it's built, uh, it will start deploying to the staging environment. So while that's, uh, while that's happening, I want to also configure Mattermost integration, which is quite a nice thing to have. So let's go to the Mattermost. Um, let's add Mattermost. Well, I need to create a team. Let's create a team. I can, since the matter was integrated in with GitLab, I can log in with GitLab login. Okay. And let's create a team. A team is called, let me see, SIP. <laughs> I, 
hope that's not the only dense we will see today. <laughs> okay, let's skip the tutorial. Okay, we have one half of Mattermost integration done. Um, so the other thing is. Um, oh, you have to go back. Ah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, right. Let's, let's keep one step. Um, thank you, Camille. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so what I need to do is finish the, the Mattermost integration because I only set it up the, the team now, so now I'll finish this part. Simple app. The changes are saved, so now I exit it by cancelling. Okay. So some simple application is already integrated. I can issue comments from here, but uh, I need to first authorize um, my GitLab backend from Marmo. So let's do that. Mm -hmm. Authorize. Okay, should we get to go? Let's see. Yeah, okay, it's working. So, now I have Marimus integration, I can create new issue. Let's create an issue. Yeah. Update. Application, that's very in, uh, unique name. Okay. And I have um, created an issue, update application. So uh, you can see here. Uh, I can go into the issues. Go into the board, um, create the defaults. Default lists, yeah. So as you can see, I have an issue board. I can move issue to to do to do doing. I can move it to done once I finish the bit. Okay. Um, I guess the deployment has finished. So let me show you. It it usually just takes a couple of minutes uh, at most. So yeah, application finished. Finish deploying, and I can go to stage. This is stage. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, so uh, once I have the application deployed, I can do a couple of things, like launch it and uh, visit it and see how it works. Verify it. Okay, it works. It shows hello world. Success. I can also launch a terminal. This is terminal correct, uh, connected to the application instance, so I can see all the files that are there. Uh, I can um, check the process list. Everything is available, so that's quite nice. Um, OK. Let me go back to the project. Okay, so now I have an issue. Let's try to resolve it somehow. I'll create a, a modification. Edit. Okay. Um, so since we're in Mexico, let's rename it to Alan. Create a branch name that uh, automatically be connected to the issue number one. Okay, changes. Okay, and now I have I have a uh, okay. So now the uh, I submitted the merge request. What's now happening is that um, we will be launching a review version of our application. So this is a special version that takes the code from the uh, from the branch and launches a special instance that's only uh, bound to this branch. It will live as long as the branch lives or merge request. Sure. Um, Okay, it seems like it deployed. Um, we can go over here and see the same thing. It's like show the web page. Hold on, as you can see, maybe I can make it bigger. Hold on. Okay, um, so I have, a, uh, I have a version of the application running. I can verify it. Let's go. 
Uh, now also information about the deployment should be visible in the merge request that I just created. Yeah, as you can see, you can click here and get the same results. So um, I can go to Kubernetes cluster, um, to refresh it first, and show you the instance that was just created. Uh, the deployment is pretty fast, so I can't show you how it deploys, uh, how it deploys, but I can show you where what you can see. So you can see all the deployments of this application we've created right now. We have only two instances. We, you can modify it if you want here. Yeah. We don't, let's not go into that. And you can see all the resources users that, that are available from the Kubernetes cluster. Okay. So. I was accidentally configured everything on the public GitHub, so that also works there. You can connect Kubernetes to the GitHub.com. Um, okay. So, since I verified everything works, let's merge the, accept the merge request. Uh, merge is in progress. So, once everything is merged, the application will be updated, the new staging uh, version will be deployed. Um, you can see it here, it's running. Just, um, maybe you can see it here. No, oh, it's already deployed. Let's get the staging version. It's still in the world, but it should soon update to. Seven minutes to get from the comment to production, and two minutes to staging. So that's pretty cool. You can go to production and see each particular issue is issued to the six of us. So yeah, that's all. So, we 
quick demo. Uh, it did turn out pretty really great. So we've been uh, quite significant and group working on that. Mm -hmm. We had Jason, uh, Pablo, DJ, uh, like uh, as a core team members that actually did manage to finish that. But we had a number of people that got involved with helping us with that. We have Jenshin that helped us with uh, resistant volumes and a runner configuration. We had Digger Young who also worked on the runner configuration. We had Joshua who worked on initial deployments and ingress configuration. And we have Tom that just, just, just helped us with basically with us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say a few words about what we have done. Uh, you saw that we actually prepared a full working installation of GitLab using official GitLab Docker image running on Kubernetes. We solved a number of challenges that were connected with that. We uh, in integrated container registry, something that was not really part of the original idea of the production demo. We integrated Mattermost uh, in the way that we shipped it with 8.15. This is basically the complete uh, direction what we plan to deliver in the uh, last year. The complete cycle of idea to production in a very automated way. <coughs> and all of that is with less encrypt, so actually uh, automatically have the, uh, your applications reconfigured with SSL certificates. It's really easy to use and it's just proven to be working. Mm, I would also would like to say that we have three new Kubernetes experts because of that. We have Jason, stand up, and give a We have Pavel, who is presenting. And we have DJ. Who are you, DJ? And six should now pretty much merge the merge request of them becoming the official our Kubernetes experts. So, merge <laughs> <Yeah>. in progress. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a getlab.com, so. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not what we met here for, right? <laughs> <laughs> you probably saw this video. I will just. Uh, <laughs> is it working? So while they're starting up the audio, I want to say how happy I am to see this. Um, although I'm slightly nervous. <laughs> but um, this is what we wanted to get done. This is, this is where we're going. This is where we're going in the first quarter. And by finishing this up, now, two days ahead of schedule, basically, uh, we can iterate on this, make this better, make this even more slick, train our salespeople uh, to give this demo, work on the features to improve this even further. So we're now unblocked, and all the people in the community that said, that's an awesome demo, but I can replicate it, we can now go back to them and say, hey, we have a way to replicate it. Um, this is how you can do it. So I'm very excited. This is Shit the Slot from the movie I Shaved, and we're about to do it. Thank you very much and see you next year. <laughs>